Welcome to part two of a G.I. Joe, a real American hero series focusing on vehicles and their real world counterparts. Thank you for watching JL's comics. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up and subscribe. I upload videos like this every week. Some of the vehicles on this list serve as actual inspiration for the G.I. Joe version, but many come afterwards and are simply fun to compare and contrast. G.I. Joe project manager Kirk Bozigian says he bought a 22 volume set of encyclopedias on the military as part of his research where he looked at armaments, design, and down to uniforms, badges, and tabs, and even acronyms and said this new toy line needed to feel like it's military. So from early development, all these toys and vehicles and play sets were grounded in reality until the wizards in R&D got their hands on them and they evolved into something else. Later on, much of the realism was lost to the fanciful and sci-fi and the extreme aesthetic of the 1990s. Now with the stage set, let's jump into our first vehicle on today's list. If you were to ask any casual or die-hard G.I. Joe fan for a list of their top vehicles, invariably the Joe's multi-purpose attack vehicle, designated Vamp, would be near the top of those lists. First appearing in 1982, the Vamp and its various variants and iterations such as the Vamp Mark II, Tiger Sting, and Cobra Stinger have been with G.I. Joe since the beginning. The first version was boxed with a driver named Clutch, making him one of the first figures to be packaged with a vehicle. The Vamp is powered by a 4.8 liter V12 fuel-injected twin-turbo engine which gives it a range of 550 miles and an impressive top speed of 140 miles per hour on four-wheel drive and an independent suspension system. Around the roll cage, the Vamp boasts dual 7.62mm computer-synchronized machine guns which can be accessed remotely. It also has a tow hook, tow bar, and heavy-duty winch up front. It's a powerful, highly maneuverable light utility and light attack vehicle which has basically become a workhorse of the G.I. Joe team serving a variety of mission types and roles. And the Vamp has a very real world counterpart. During World War II, the United States Army contracted with Willys Overland Motors for a series of 4x4 trucks that came to be known as the famous and world renowned Willys Jeep. It was everywhere during the war with over half a million being built. The M38 truck replaced the venerable Willys Jeep and then the M151 Mutt, meaning military utility tactical truck, succeeded the M38 as the Korean War wound down in the early 1950s. In the 1960s, the US Army began looking for a replacement for the M151 and put out bids to a variety of companies for design proposals. One of the first of these developed prototypes was FMC Corporation's XR311, which came with three Chrysler engine options that all used a torque flight automatic transmission. A small block rear mounted 5.2 liter V8 capable of producing 190 horsepower, a 5.9 liter V8 or a V8 turbo diesel option. The Army outfitted four with 10 capacity tow anti-tank missile launchers, three with 360 degree traversable M2 machine guns meant for a recon roll, and three with 7.62 millimeter M60 MGs, which could also take 5.56 or even an XM174 grenade launcher. Another received a 106mm recoilless rifle with 6 rounds mounted above the roll cage. These were the original 4 plus the additional models built after it was sold. In the 1970s, a fuel crisis ground many industries and manufacturers to a halt and massively drove up prices of fuels and plastics. Companies like Lamborghini sought other options as sales of the famous Countach and the Miura declined precipitously. Lamborghini contracted out with other companies on development. One contract was to build the M1 with BMW, and another of these contracts was with Mobility Technology International MTI, to build a prototype for the US Army's all-terrain truck program. Enter the Lamborghini Cheetah. The four-seater off-road vehicle dubbed Lamborghini Cheetah also used Chrysler rear-mounted engines like a 360 cubic inch 5.9 liter V8 with an automatic transmission capable of putting out 183 bhp at 4,000 RPMs that could hit a top speed of 104 miles per hour. In America, MTI took, whether it was inspired, borrowed, or stolen, remains for debate, but they used design cues from FMC's XR311 entry and sent them to Lambo in Italy for the build. It was so similar in fact that in 1977, FMC filed a lawsuit against Lamborghini, and the lawsuit actually bankrupted Lamborghini at the time, especially after they had diverted much of their BMW M1 project funds to this cheater program. Luckily, they were saved by Mimram Brothers, who purchased Lamborghini for $3 million at the start of the 1980s, adjusting for inflation, that's approximately $8.8 .8 million in 2021 dollars. 
The Cheater prototype had been sent to Nevada for a promo shoot, but when MTI learned that Lamborghini was having financial problems, they sold the prototype to Teledyne Continental Motors, who made a couple more prototypes because they wanted the lucrative US Army contract for themselves. And lessons learned from Cheetah's development helped with the LM001, Lamborghini Militaria, and the LM002, the famous Rambo Lambos, which now got a V8 engine from AMC, and whose lessons were also applied to cars like the LP500, the current Lamborghini Urus owes its pedigree to the LM002. At the end, neither the FMC nor Lamborghini won the contract. The US gave the contract to AM General, who developed their high-mobility, multi-purpose wheeled vehicle, the iconic Hummer, while G.I. Joe received the Vamp. You know who did get a cheetah though? MacGyver for the Brazilian company Glassleet's TV Toys line of licensed IP. Speaking of Hummers, the G.I. Joe team did eventually get their own version of the Hummer at the start of the 1990s. In fact, the Joes have had a few different iterations of the Humvee over the years, like the Hammer, 2002's Brawler, MUV, 2003's Smokescreen Transport, the Jungle Strike Humvee of 2004, and finally SWAT RTV from 2008. The G.I. Joe Hammer featured a fully rotational computer-controlled roof turret mounted with a high-impact pulse cannon with mega tracer rounds. Hammer was also mounted with multi-deployable twin-barreled side gun stations, a long-range heat-sensitive guided missile system and whose frame came with a crunch guard front bumper, a titanium engine cover with a circle vent system, an aerodynamic shrapnel resistant cover, and rear hatches in compartments for fuel and storage. The 2002 brawler that came with heavy duty as a driver replaced the cannon with a multiple launch rocket system and added a combo whip antenna to stay in touch over long ranges. In 1981, the U.S. Army finally awarded the coveted contract to AM General to put their prototype truck into production, winning over Cheetah and FMC. They ordered 55,000 M998s for the U.S. Army and allocated 39,000 for the Navy, Air Force, and Marines to share. In 1989, the Hummer saw its first combat operations during the invasion of Panama for Operation Just Cause, and then really caught its stride in the Middle Eastern deserts of Iraq and Kuwait during the Gulf War. During the next year as Operation Restore Hope raged on in Somalia, the US military realized that they needed more protection on their new vehicles to be able to take on more direct fire from close range from a variety of different angles, as they took them from the deserts of the Arabian Peninsula to the narrow streets of Mogadishu. That's when AM General made the M114 an up-armored version of the original Humvee. Wouldn't be until the early and middle 2000s when Humvees would start to be phased out in favor of MRAPs that could take IED attacks, and later the JLTV, Joint Light Tactical Vehicle, has begun supplanting the Humvees' missions, although Hummers are projected to continue their service until 2050. They're powered by either a 6.2 liter turbo diesel or a 5.7 liter gas engine that can put out 190 horsepower for a max speed of around 70 miles per hour when not laden with a full load. Mil-spec Hummers have received countless upgrades and have been outfitted for a plethora of different missions and roles. They come in a variety of configurations, like versions that carry tow missile launchers, or Hellfire missile launchers, or 105mm guns, or anything from transport to ambulance to cargo carrier. They can also carry active denial systems or Phoenix communication satellite dishes. The G.I. Joe 2002 Brawler is like an M114 up-armored Humvee. It features a 360-degree traversable ring mount on the hood that could accommodate a Browning M250 Cal, M240, M60, M249 Saw, Mark 19 40mm grenade launcher, an M124 6-barrel minigun, or a Gao 19 3-barrel Gatling gun. For rocket launchers, we need to look at the M998 Avenger and the M1097 Heavy Humvee Avenger, which uses the FIM-92 Stinger missiles fired from the mounted launcher. In other words, the illustrious platform became prolific and an ever-present threat to our adversaries during the 1990s and 2000s, serving countless vital roles during numerous operations. Speaking of Hummers, Cobra got another version altogether in 2009 with the release of the Steel Crusher APV with the rise of Cobra Line. The Steel Crusher armor-plated vehicle was driven by Nitro Viper. It came equipped with a removable iron plow on the front bumper, a sliding roof that could reveal a missile launcher, and pop-out compartments on the rear passenger doors which held even more missiles. It was painted in a stealthy all-black, and yet broke cover as it was emblazoned with a crimson red Cobra logo on the doors. A real version of Steel Crusher was seen in the Rise of Cobra movie, driven by the likes of Baroness and Storm Shadow while in Paris, France. Steel Crusher is built around the civilian-designated GM-built Hummer H2, which happened to use the same GMT platform used by GM and Chevy's other trucks and SUVs like Sierra, Suburban, Tahoe, and Silverado. H2s are powered by either a 6-liter V8 or a 6.2-liter V8 that can put out 325 horsepower and came with a softer, more rounded, less riveted, less tactical look than its predecessor, the H1. 
The idea was to take what made H1 so fun and cool and repackage it into a more consumer and family friendly offering. H2 boasted night vision, navigation, OnStar, and telematics that were considered advanced at the time. Later versions included the H2 SUT, H3, and the H4 concept called the HX, and the new state-of-the-art Hummer EV. The first civilian Hummer was delivered in 1992 from maker AM General, whose roots trace back to the Kaiser Jeep Corps of 1964, and even the Willys Overland in the 1903 Overland Runabout. It was in 1908 when John North Willys bought Overland, and Overland became Willys Overland. Speaking of the Rise of Cobra movie, the movie also features a few MRAPs as part of Duke's convoy at the start of the film, inspired by the likes of Cougars and Max Pro. Cinema Vehicle Services built the seven custom MRAPs for the movie. The Max Pro 4x4 MRAP is based on the Navstar International Model 7000 chassis. It comes with a Max Force Engine Model D 8.7 liter 16 turbo intercooled direct electronic fuel injected engine. The 4x4 version is a Category 1 mine-resistant utility vehicle whose V-shaped hull can protect against IEDs and which also boasts an MBC protection system to shield its occupants from nuclear, biological, and chemical attack. Force Protection Inc.'s 4x4 Cougar MRAP is a 3-door, three 3-ton three capacity, Caterpillar C7 diesel-powered MRAP used by the Marines, Navy, and Army. General Dynamics acquired Force Protection in 2011 and continued producing them. Cougars can fire an M240 or an M2. It can take a remote 7.62mm or 12.7mm machine guns or a 40mm automatic grenade launcher and has a top range of 65 miles per hour with a 420 mile range. These are also NBC overpressure and filter protected and they can take 30 pound TNT charge under either axle or a 15 pound TNT charge under the center. And it's able to do this because here too the V-shaped hull directs blast energy out and away from the crew of two or the up to four troops in the back. The 6x6 version can hold 8 troops for a total human capacity of 10. MRAPs are used for a variety of service like convoy support, troop support, EOD, patrols, medevac, recon, comms, command and control, and more. This particular MRAP traces its design and capabilities back to OMC's RG31, and the MRAPs made as early as the 1980s for South Africa and the Buffalo replacement known as the Mamba APC that was built upon a Unimog chassis. Lin Systems OMC is a subsidiary of BAE Systems, and BAE's Cayman MRAP is based on the M1078 LMTV, which makes it cheap and easy to build and fix with its mass-produced, easy-to-find, and easy-to-repair parts. Cinema Vehicles is the company that built the trucks for G.I. Joe Rise of Cobra using a Ford LN8000 chassis. They also built the trucks that were used in the Hunger Games by Pan Am, which they called Peacekeepers, and they used the same chassis and designs, although they were outfitted in different paint. And with that, we've arrived at the end of the second installment of G.I. Joe Vehicles and the Real World Counterparts. What's your favorite vehicle on this list? Let me know in the comments below. And stay tuned in coming weeks as we continue to explore the vehicles of G.I. Joe and Cobra. Until then, that's a wrap on this one, my friends. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and you'll be one of the first to know when I upload videos just like this each and every week. I'm Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.